Hello, I'm Emrys. I'm returning today to talk to you about mindfulness in our current lives. Thanks to the East Haddam Library, the Rathbun Library, and the Friends at the Library. You can connect with me more at my website, decadent-wellness.com, or here on Facebook at Decadent Wellness. And today I've been looking at a book called The Book of Ichigo Ichi. I'll show you the cover here. I know there's some glare and you can see I have a lot bookmarked for us to talk about. The subtitle is The Art of Making the Most of Every Moment the Japanese Way. And so this is a beautiful book that gives us um, some simple, teaching stories, which really help illustrate ideas in a more accessible way. And um, they're all based around this idea of Ichigo Ichi, which is um, sometimes translated as what we are experiencing right now will never happen again. And um, the authors of this book, sorry, I forgot to mention, are Hector Garcia and Francesc Morales. They've come together to present these little places we can dip into, dip out of, or you can, of course, read the book all the way through if you prefer. But one way I thought would be nice to get a sense of the book is to just touch on a few of these places I have bookmarked for us. So another translation of Ichigo Ichi is a unique encounter in time. And that is referencing that each encounter is actually a unique encounter in time. Every meeting and every time is inherently unique. They don't repeat, right? And how having that idea, how loosely as we move through life, can really help pull us into presence, pull us into being a little more likely to remember this too is special, this too is temporary. Everything is always changing. I'm changing, you're changing, the weather is changing, the season is changing. Everything is changing. And sometimes we feel that is bittersweet but can we embrace the sweetness of that and feel the preciousness? And so um, there are various different stories in here, like I said, that pull us into that feeling of being in the present moment. There's also this quote from The Time Paradox written by Philip Zimbardo. When you are mindful, you are fully aware of your surroundings and of yourself in the present. Mindfulness increases the time that you swim with your head above water, when you can see both potential dangers and pleasures. When you are mindful, you are aware of your position and your destination. You can make corrections to your path. So this is the sort of quote that I feel we could use as an invitation to some time spent in reflection. So maybe you want to take this book out from one of the libraries and spend some time with it, or maybe you just want to take this little snippet from my time with you now and you want to take that quote and use that as inspiration for a little reflection with yourself a little exploration of what would it feel like to have your head above water a little bit more to be able to see your destination and be where you are right now in your current position so you could do that any number of ways. One way to do that practice is something we might think of more traditionally, sitting either on a cushion or a block or something else that allows you to 
be grounded, lengthen your spine, ease out your shoulders and neck, and either close your eyes or look down gently. You're just really trying to make sure that you're not looking all around, taking in lots of information, but rather focusing on your inner experience. So you could use this reflection time, you know, a few minutes, however long feels appropriate for you to really feel into that feeling, that curiosity of what does it feel like to be both where I am and able to see clearly ahead, present and mindful. If that doesn't feel appealing to you, that's okay. You might prefer to do a nice, slow, mindful walk. Get some time in nature and really reflect on this or another of the quotes from this book. So I'll take us to another quote and we'll talk about that one a little bit. And again, you could use that either as an inspiration to sit and reflect or as an inspiration as you move through the world. And you might even like to sort of take one of these snippets from this book as a inspiration or reflection for your day, right? How would I move through the day if I were loosely holding this idea? So in a section that's using the teaching story about the second arrow, which is a very traditional teaching story from the Buddha. They have this quote from the Buddha. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. Now, what this is pointing toward is that first arrow, if someone were hit with an arrow, is painful. And there's no denying that that is painful. But often what we do when we experience something that's painful is we then sort of pile on, right? So then maybe we start with, oh, I shouldn't have this, or I should have that, or why am I not over this already? Or if that other person hadn't whatever else, we just start adding all these additional layers that are not actually the pain. But these additional layers are also very painful. And so those additional layers are considered the second arrow. And there can also be, of course, second, third, fourth, right? However many arrows we're inflicting upon ourselves, which are considered to be optional. Yeah, they don't always feel so optional. It's not always so easy to not do those extra layers. But we might look for some curiosity in our lives. Are there places where I can do just a little bit less of that? Or I can notice that I'm doing that and say, oh, maybe that's enough of that. Let me just be gentle around that. Now, of course, some of us know that when we try to do that, we actually can be hard on ourselves again. I shouldn't be doing that, right? And so again, we try to bring that gentleness and that compassion, that presence to our own selves. And when we do these practices with our own selves, we're also cultivating over time with repetition, with practice, of course, that big word practice for meditation and mindfulness. We're also building how we are then more likely to be able to be with others, which is still imperfect, still human, but maybe a little less likely to engage in those second arrows. So um, if you're finding, oh yeah, that sounds like something that I wanna play with a little bit. Like I said before, you can do a seated practice. You can take it out into your life to reflect on it. You might also find that you wanna journal a little bit about it. Where is somewhere in my life that I know that I tend to add that second arrow, third arrow, fourth arrow, however many there are. And is there a way I could be a little bit gentler with those? And sometimes the answer is not right now. 
we're just seeing it. We're just seeing that it's there. I'm going to wrap up for us with one more excerpt from this book. This is a little breakout box in a section talking about tea ceremonies. And this is called Having Tea With Yourself. Although the Chinoyu ceremony was conceived for at least two people, traditionally the tea master and a guest, it's a great idea to have a regular tea with yourself, as the Uruguayan author Walter Dressel suggested. Constantly tied up with commitments and external obligations as we are, a date with ourselves once a week can be a true balm for the soul. You can set aside a fixed time and day every week, to spend in a cafe or tea house that you find inspiring. Once you have ordered your tea, give yourself the gift of that time to think, take notes in a journal, or simply breathe deeply and take in the world around you with all five of your senses. So I wanted to just wrap up on that little invitation. Like I said, this whole book is full of invitations to this idea that what we're experiencing now will never happen again. And you might like to actually pick up a copy of it at either of our libraries or somewhere else that's convenient to you. Or you might just find that listening to this little mini talk has helped spark some ideas for how you want to pull yourself into presence. Just little touches in here and there. You might want to try that tea practice that might call to you more than doing the nature walk or the seated reflection time. Again, if you'd like to connect further, I do run meditation groups and you can reach me at Decadent Wellness sorry, that's decadent-wellness.com or on Facebook at Decadent Wellness. My name is Emrys. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you to the libraries and the friends of the library.